back to my epoch tutorial series. This video will cover how to install and configure the R3F tow and lift mod. This will allow you to tow vehicles and lift them with helicopters. This is not a script that I created. This was created by some nice guys over at Armaholic and they do some really great work. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing you need to do is go to the link in the description, come over here to the right, and download zip. That will download all the files you'll need for this tutorial. So I'm going to move it out to my desktop so you can see everything that's happening. And I'm going to extract all the files. So now that all the files are extracted, we can go ahead and open that up. Now what we need to do is open up our server. So go into your epoch server. You'll need to find the battle I folder in the root directory here. So where all of your server files are, you'll open up the battle I folder and you'll have a bunch of text documents like this. So open up all the uh, R3F tow mods and you'll find the attached to and set position text files. You need to copy both of these over into the server battle I folder. It will ask you to replace files. Go ahead and do it. So now what we need to do is go back to the main epoch server folder. Here you need to navigate to your mission file that you're using. You'll go into MP missions and choose whichever mission you use. For me, I'm using Instance 11 Trinaris, so you'll have to choose which file you're using. We need to copy over this folder, the R3F Ardian log, into our mission. So as you can see, it's all been copied over here now. And when that's finished, you'll need to open your init SQF. Just like all the other mods, we have to initialize this. So go back to your GitHub page that you pulled up from the description, and at number four, you'll see that there's some code in the block here. Copy that code, come over to your init SQF, and go all the way down to the bottom. Go to the very last line, go enter a couple times, and paste the code that you copied. This needs to go at the very bottom. This actually finishes the install, but what we have to do is disable the towing of locked vehicles. If you don't want to disable that, you can skip this part and go over to the actual configuration part of the tutorial, but I really suggest doing this. If you don't disable the towing of locked vehicles, players will go around and just steal any locked vehicle they can find just to mess around on the server. And this is something we really want to prevent because it's going to make everyone leave your server if you don't do this part. This is a little more in depth than just adding one line to the init, but it's not too hard and I'll walk you through it. So still in the init, you'll need to find this line. If you want, you can copy it. And then go over here in your notepad plus plus and search and, find, and go to the find, or you can just press control F and then paste this line in here. Select find next and it will highlight the line that we're looking for. So now that we found the line, we need to replace that with this here. So now we have done that portion of it and you can now save and close your init SQL. Now go back to your R3F tow and lift folder. Now what we need to do is copy this custom folder here into the mission file like we did the R3F. So now what we have to do is make two final edits. We're done with the entire R3F folder so you can close that off. We need to go back to our root directory, so we're going to go back here where you've got all of your server files and go into the DAISY epoch server. 
Here we're going to have to unpack our PBO. If you've never done PBO unpackaging before and you don't have a tool for it, on the GitHub page here you can click PBO Manager and it will take you to a page to download the tool. The manager can be downloaded here at the bottom. You choose one of the two download FTP sites and it'll download and just go ahead and install that. Now once that's installed you can right click Daisy Server, go to PBO Manager and extract to Daisy Server. So that's going to extract everything in that compressed PBO into a folder that we can actually edit. Now before we continue, name this Daisy Server underscore backup. If you already have a backup and everything's working in your current server build, go ahead and just delete the old backup or you can name this backup 2 or backup 3, it doesn't matter. Just know that this is a backup in case anything we edit messes up. And now we can go into the Daisy server folder here. We need to go into compile folder and then find the server publish vehicle 2 SQL. There are three server published vehicles. You need to use number two. So let's open that up in our notepad plus plus. And we need to find this block of code. So the best way to do that is just copy the first line. And again, we're going to search for it. This makes things a lot easier so you don't have to go through all the lines of code. And we have found it right here. What we need to do now is change it to this. So now simply copy this other block of code and paste it over the one we want to replace. The pasted code we have is on the left side but everything else has moved over a little bit. Just highlight all of it and press the tab button and it'll tab over for you. Now you can go ahead and save and close this file. All of our edits in this one file are done. And we'll go back to the server file that we were in. Go back into the daisy server and open the system. Now open server monitor. Again we're going to have to find some code and edit it. So copy the first line, search for it, and we found it. So again you can just copy the whole code and paste it over this. Make sure when you're pasting these codes that you remove the stuff that's already there. We can just delete it and paste over it. Now again we can tab this over so that it looks nice. So now what we do is we go ahead and save that file too and we can close it. Everything is installed now but all we have to do is one last thing. We come back to this file where we unpacked our server PBO and now we have to repackage it so that the server can read it. Right click the daisy server folder and go down until you find PBO manager again. You want to package this into daisy server.pbo and as you can see it's made another PBO. You can delete the server file so now you just have the PBO we just edited and the one that has been set as our backup. So this completes the install and disabling of locked vehicle tone, but I'm also going to cover configuring the files. So if you want to configure it to yourself, you can. You don't have to do it. It's all pre-configured and ready to go, but if you want to change some of the stuff in it, you're going to need this information. So to customize what you can tow and lift, we're going to go ahead and go back to the main server folder like we did before. Now navigate into your MP missions and of course into the mission file that you're using. For me, again, it's Genaris. You'll go into the R3F party and log. And then you will go into the R3F log file. And now you'll open the config.sqf file right here. 
And in here, you can change what you can tow and lift. This here gives you a bit of information on what this portion is. It's a list of class names of ground or air vehicles which can tow towable objects. So these objects can tow items that have been listed as towable. If you want something to not be able to tow, simply delete it. So let's say we don't want the Icarus bus to tow. There are two Icarus buses. So what we'll do is we'll delete both of those. Now the Icarus bus can't tow anything. And if you want to add something, you have to find the class name. You can't just type in something. So if you want the bus to tow, you can't simply do this. That's not going to work. You have to know the class name, which is Icarus. So we've added that one bus in, but the Icarus, the other bus isn't there. That bus name was a little bit different. As you can see, it had a little bit of a longer name. It had TK Civ EP1 after it. If you don't know what the name is, look it up on Google. Just search Daisy Epoch Vehicle Class Names, and you can find some pretty decent lists. Now, if you want to change what you can tow, you'll come down to this section here. As you can see, it's a list of class names of towable objects. Here, we have a few things enabled for towing. So you can tow the C-130. You can tow the MB-22. You can tow some of the SUVs, things like that. So if something's not towable that you want to be able to tow, you can add the class name in here just like you did above. And again, if you don't want something to be towable, like let's say we don't want you to be able to tow an MB-22, you just delete those, and it's untowable now. Now this here is a list of class names of air vehicles which can lift liftable objects. So this can, these are what you can use to lift cars and things like that. Again, it's all the above stuff applies here. You can just delete what you don't want to be able to lift things or add new class names in. One thing I want to make sure you know is if you do add a new class name, you have to add a comma after it, if it's in the middle here. If it's the last object, it doesn't use a comma. So every object, not including the last one, must have a comma after it. If you want to add it to the bottom instead of in the middle like I was doing, do a comma, add the new class, and that's it. As you can see, I don't have a comma here. That is very important. If you don't use the commas correctly, it will not work. Now continuing on, this is a list of class names of liftable objects. These are the objects that these items can lift. So the MI-17 has the ability to lift all of these things here, and so does the UH-1 and all these other objects. The same rules apply to everything else here. Delete what you don't want liftable or add what you do. You can add other choppers or other flying vehicles to this if you want. It's not recommended, of course, but it's your server. You do what you want. And that's it for that part of it, but we also have a load in vehicle section now. These are the items that are capable of transporting something you can load in. So this is the class name, and this here is the load capacity. So this is how much it can actually carry. Underneath that, you see that there is the transportable objects. So these are the items you can load into these. So you're able to load a gyro inside of an AH-6, if you like, or an MI-17. And this number here, again, is the capacity cost. This here only requires a 10 capacity cost. So you can load five of those in here. 
whereas with the gyro you can only load one in. With the old motorbike you can load two in because it's a 25 cost. You can change these to see fit. If you want it to be unlimited you can just make this a whole bunch of nines. If you want to make it so that you add an SUV. So the class name for an SUV we can actually find up here if we want or you can look online. But let's go ahead and make it so that all these SUVs can now store items. So what we'll do is we'll put a comma here and paste all of our SUVs in. Now obviously we have to do a little formatting so that this works for this section. What you need to do is put a bracket like the above and choose capacity. Let's say that we only want to allow these to carry bikes. You know just normal bikes like the mountain bikes that you have to pedal. So we'll give it a 10 because down here you can see that the mountain bike and the old bike only have a cost of 10. So anything of low cost can be stored into the SUV blue which currently by default it's only the mountain bike and the old bike. And we can continue doing this for all of them. If you want all of the SUVs to be able to do this you have to do it for each class. If you only want one to do it then you can do it like that but the problem is players are going to be wondering why they can't load it into one SUV and when they can load it into another. So you'll need to do this edit for every single one of them. And you continue on till you get to the last SUV yellow one. You give it the 10 cost and this time there is no comma. So that's pretty much a conclusion of how to edit the files for this. There is a little section down here of movable objects. I really suggest you don't mess around with that. This is just what the players can move. It's not really important for this file system. I would suggest keeping it like that. But as you can see all of this stuff is already pre-configured for you and ready to go. You can move all these things around, change what you want, but I really suggest just leaving it to how I configured. I made it so that it's generally how it should be. You can tow the towable objects that you would relatively need to, such as the C-130, because that thing is impossible to fly if, you're, if it's been spawned in the middle of woods or something like that, whereas normal planes are a lot easier to get off the ground. So go ahead and save the file if all your edits are good to go. I'm not going to save it because I like mine the way it is, and everything's been installed as it needs to be. As always, thanks for watching. Leave me a comment if you've got some trouble. Uh, keep a watch out. Subscribe if you want to see some more tutorials. I will have more videos coming up. The next one after this will be a mission system. It's been really requested, but I've had to do a lot of tweaking myself to get it to work properly. So, again, it will be fully configured and ready to go.